All right, here we are at the south end of Washington getting ready to start the BDR. Andrew couldn't make this trip, so he got his twin and stunt double, Greg Matthews. All right. Oh, shit. Hey, what did I tell you? Oh. I stalled it, my God, on the bridge. Those of you who have uh, found this video because you're looking for Washington BDR and you're not subscribed, you haven't seen our videos before, let me give you the lowdown. So Andrew, the guy who's not here, and I fashion ourselves as heavy enduro riders. So we ride big bikes, this is a 790. Previously we had 1090s and we like to take them on double track and even a bunch of really stupid single track. Sometimes they're deep in the forest, other times on top of mountains. We're not very good. We call ourselves the dirt chimps. And uh, yeah, we're pretty chill about it. We just like to film and share our dorky adventures. Ooh, the end of the pavement, perfect. Hey, so one of the things that we like to focus on in our videos, whoa, we're gonna turn. <laughs> Navigation. One of the things we like to focus on in our videos is uh, the struggle. The parts that we don't clean, the parts where we're man hauling bikes. I don't think we're going to have any of that up here. Uh, we've been told that this Washington BDR is quite simple. So we'll focus on the beauty and maybe a little bit of the camping and the bikes and some of the packing decisions that we're making. The guy following me, Greg, is a uh, very accomplished mountain biker and bike packer. Like he's one of those 200 kilometer a day guys that you might have heard of. People who can just go forever. So he knows how to pack a real light bike and of course he's in incredibly good shape so i'm here to learn some stuff from him and he's relatively new to dirt biking so maybe i can teach him a thing or two yeah baby there he is watch out for cars <laughs> this type of riding is exactly the situation where you want to have some nice weight on your front tire but when you're carrying full camping gear and tools and clothing and all that kind of stuff it's extra hard so as i mentioned in a couple of previous videos i've changed my handlebars to an mx style bar which has less sweep and less rise it's helped me get up front a little bit more i'm actually leaning forward in the front of my foot pegs well a trick that chris birch taught us in a class where your foot is in the foot peg like what end you're leaning on will impact the weighting of the bike a bit Every little bit helps. I'm trying to get my weight over that front tire for these sweeping corners because if I don't, it seems to kick out. I'm okay if the back end kicks out a bit. But that's not going to send me off the cliff. But my front end goes, I better start flapping my wings. I've also added a bunch of preload to my rear shock. That helps move the weight forward in the bike. I think I could do it even more. It's not uncontrollably stiff back there. Maybe I'll do that tonight or at lunch today. Just know that there are a lot of things you can do to your bike and your riding technique. And it's just an ongoing process of learning. We just stopped briefly and I was complimenting Greg on his ability to uh, basically ride gravel a lot faster than the first time I met him earlier this year. As I mentioned before, he's a very accomplished mountain biker and he also really pays attention to his technique when he's doing stuff like this. And the technique's exactly the same between mountain bike and dirt bike. So he's trying to drop his handlebars down, lean it down like that, get the side bitey knobs, and he's wagging his butt to the outside of the turn. He's also pushing down with his foot that outside peg once that turns initiated to really smush the tire into the ground he's doing great when i first met him he was like hey we should go do a bdr i'm like dude you gotta get faster and like this is a month later i'm like yeah you're plenty fast now we can we can hang well, that concludes a really nice little gravel section you just hit some slab here that's okay all the pavement i've hit around here has been amazing this is like if you're looking down at my speedo it's in uh, kilometers but more importantly you got the little caution light there i got 
had an oil change done right before coming down here, and we forgot to reset the computer. I think that's it. That pavement did not last long at all. Right back into the dirt. Love it. Whoa. Pump the brakes. This is a little bit different in here. We're down and down lower for sure. Deciduous trees, gravel path, pretty bumpy as you saw there. Occasional cross ditch. It is pretty dusty, so we've separated. We stop every five minutes and make sure the other guy's there. Switch spots and go. Jump. <laughs> Something went bang back here. So we stopped and uh, now we're just seeing what's happened. Did you go bang like bottom out your suspension? Cool. You can have a clean spot up there, yeah. a clean spot on the muffler. Yeah, clean spot on the huh. tank. Yeah, there's a little bit of a bouncy bounce there. If you're not ready for it, it's going to send you for a loop. I too am going to do a little bit of repair work here. Because normally I'd have that tighter. Not tighter. Yeah. Yeah. And we'll just double this back. And my luggage was actually a little bit loose. Surprises me. Just like that, we popped out and we're in a completely different type of zone here. It's dry, it's like 10 degrees hotter. Well, maybe not 10. What a change. It's a little bit loose, something new. Also new, my motorcycle traction control is given up, as has my ABS. I've got warnings for each. I've cycled the ignition a couple times, and yeah, they're grumpy. So, not sure what's going on there. Doesn't seem to be anything hanging off. Maybe there's something just unplugged underneath the seat somewhere. Not too concerned about it. Don't really need either of those things, right? <laughs> Chunky, chunky, sweet. This is the toughest stuff we've done yet today. There, done. <laughs> the weekend is coming and the campers are out. Look at this back road going. A paved back road. Skinny, twisty, beautiful. They have the best paved roads of any riding I've ever done. And what we rode this morning to get here was paved, but it was all screwed up. And I loved it. I loved it because there were like jumps and ruts and angry bits and twisty. It was absolutely perfect. Perfect for an adventure bike. Not so perfect for your Harley or Porsche. Anything like that would be a disaster. This is super. Even if you hate ride pavement, you can't tell me what my guy meant. Section one's behind us, now we're starting on section two. We don't have a lot of day left, but we'll go out, rip it for a couple of hours, get away from town, find somewhere cool to camp. Wow. Imagine how much fun this would be if it was real sloppy. Those ruts are deep. Chunky, oh my goodness, whoa. Big view. Yeah, we gotta take a look, eh? Oh. Wow. It is big. There's some smoke in the air. Yeah. Man. That soft melon. Sun's going down. The shadows are really cool, huh? It's nice that we're not riding right into the sun right now.
We have ridden a lot today. Oh, look at the campers way up here. <laughs> we rode to the south end of the BDR, 200 kilometers, rode section one, and now we're in section two. We're getting after it. <laughs> My quads are on fire. It's been a long day. Standing for most of it. These bikes are so incredible, aren't they? The punishment that they take. The places they can take you, how fast they go. Amazing. Just press the bill and now we've got our first look at this valley. That's even the way we're supposed to go. How cool is that? Send the mountain into a little town and then we'll see how I feel and see what's available. We're just two real easy going guys. No particular place to be any particular time. It's really nice. And the weather certainly is behaving. My goodness. So nice. I took a little too much there, I admit it. <laughs> this stuff I just got all real grippy and fun, so I'm feeling a little spark. Traction's great. It's been a little loose all day, so... people who watch our videos uh we're headed to the baja on february 3rd i don't know when it ends but with uh, gps kevin so if you look up gps kevin baja i think it's like any given sunday that's not quite right but that's right andrew and i are doing and uh mike hall is coming i i believe mike hall is coming yeah he's coming uh oh dirty mats coming how cool is that that's a, a bit of an insider and a bunch of other people from our town, and I think there's even extra space if you need your uh, bike truck down. Yeah, it'd be fun to meet other people who uh, have seen some of our shenanigans, maybe joined us at the adventure bike gathering in the past. It'd be great. Oh, and we will not be on these bikes. We'll be on our 501s. I don't know Baja very well so far for me. Baja is about the 501. Someday maybe I'll become a big boy and I can drive this bike down there, but not yet. Here's a cool section. A little different than what we've been doing for the last while. camping up here we're probably not gonna see any big fifth wheel trailers hey eh? can't really see with the sun and the dust on my glasses hope I don't hit anything real big sweet oh I have a voicemail someone probably trying to contact me about my extended warranty Chonk! Woo! Hoo -hoo. 
<laughs> it's so big. Okay, I got somewhere to be. Time to go. This is rough. <laughs> Whoa. Whoa. <laughs> okay. This is probably a lookout. Watching my GPS down there. No, this is the trail. Yeah, I think this dips into the threes for difficulty. Well, it's definitely. It's not a hard three, but it's a three. It's a chunky three. Making your suspension work. That's for sure. Okay, what do you think we do here? Probably go that way. Because it's just so cool. Yeah, baby. Wow. Well, that was the top of the mountain. We're gonna work our way down and try to find this lake. Set up camp, have a well-earned sleep, wake up and do it again. I'm so tired. My legs are thundered. My wrists are tired. I wonder what it would be like using those uh, Mako 360 bouncy bouncy bars that Andrew, aka Swag, has on his bike. I bet they would have helped a lot today. Pretty punishing my old wrists. We are getting close to the lake. We're losing light. I still have my sunglasses on, so it might be a lot brighter than I think, but we are losing light. Map says we're close. Still in the BDR, we're gonna have to take a little detour, it's about two kilometers. And hopefully it's not too gnar. It's time to set up a tent. Get out of these stinking boots. <laughs> Dogs are barking. We've made it to our remote campsite. <laughs> it's not very remote. And first wildlife of the trip. Mama, two babies, and a big one. They're hiding. Cool, man. Oh, Scrappy, I'm done with you for the day. I am done. Okay, man, we made it. High five. Way to go. This is our campsite. Yeah, okay, good night. <laughs> Take Greg, day two on the BDR. Oh, yeah. I think we're ready to buggy. Let's hit it. Yep. Take a quick look at my bike while we're hanging out here for a few minutes. I uh, used all my suspension yesterday. That was good. These little rings are about an inch out now, but I moved them several times during the day. I'm running the Moscow 40s, which I'm really enjoying. It's just enough to carry my essentials with this top roll. And this top roll is bigger than the normal Moscow 40 top roll. That's a camera. And I got my sheep concepts from my butt. That's pretty sweet. Helps keep things cool. But when it gets technical, I have to take this out because I've lost the, the benefit of the low seat height and me being able to touch the ground. And then navigation, my new mirrors. That's it, that's all we're rolling today. Okay, we've got a little bit of drama this morning. Oh man, the lens might be dirty. Okay, we've got a little bit of a problem right now. Scrappy came down from the campsite. Didn't start super great. Stalled right about there. Rolled to here. Now it doesn't want to start. It sounds kind of like the Arizona BDR. It's catching a little bit. Battery seems low. We're not sure what to do. I got my toe strap out, so we're gonna give it a little bump start. Let it idle for a while. Turn it off, see what happens. Adventure. Okay, we're hooked up the toe. Nice and easy, okay buddy. No cars. Got it wrapped around my foot peg. Uh, second, third, fourth, here we go. Working. 
my dash is all still lit up with all my failures. The guys at Rider's Edge Suspension tried to help me out yesterday by telling me what to look for around these sensors. And I did. Couldn't find any evidence of a problem. So it's a mystery. It's a KTM mystery. Same with this charging system failure. I'm quite concerned about getting into a difficult spot and then having to bump start it or tow it right out. Let's leave it running for a little bit. I'm just gonna rip around. Let's hope that I just left my GPS on or something last night. I, I didn't, but I don't know. We also found a bunch of oil in my air filter box. I changed my air filter this, uh, this morning and there's a bunch of oil in there now that the breather hose goes in there. It's kind of normal, but I don't know, there was two ounces in there. That seemed like a lot. Oil level's fine on the bike, maybe a tiny bit low, but I don't know, these kind of things concern me, especially when you're way out there, away from home. where we're going we're at that little lake we're gonna boogie back and then carry on on the pink line and we're not gonna stall the bike we're not gonna turn it on off unnecessarily see you guys later they were really friendly a little spot 20 bucks for the two of us and off we go started just after 9 a.m. this morning, a little later than we would have wanted to. But uh, that's when the campground opened, we still needed to pay. They let us check in quite late last night. Gotta go set up and give her. Oh, look at this. I think this is the hardest section of the BDR, or maybe that's what we just came through. We were not entirely sure. We're just gonna head out and see what we find. Baby Head Hill, which is supposed to be the crux of this whole mission, so wish us luck. <laughs> no crashing with my dead battery. Can you stay a little bit behind me? Yeah. watching the video. There's a good line and a bad line here. I'm gonna take the good line. There's enough riding today to make sure I'm plenty tired tonight without me trying to level everything up. Section two does not disappoint. Section one was mostly a collection of gravel roads and some dirt paths. Section two has been mostly chonk. Quite sustained, definitely designed to tire you out. Well, we made it 
get to Ellensburg. We're done segment two. And we're at this motorcycle shop. Greg here got some oil for his bike. It's not burning oil, it's just missing oil, hey? Yeah, it's just good. missing a bit of oil. Sparky's running fine. We think what happened was that I have a GoPro charger in here that was plugged in there. Yeah. And I didn't think this was hot when the bike was turned off, but I think it is now. So it just ran on the battery. Live and learn. Okay, let's boogie. Well, suffice it to say that this part of Washington is windy. Oh my God. This is kind of cool. The cattle are crossing the road. The farmer's got his quad out blocking traffic. And just up ahead, we've got turbines. Good place for turbines considering all the wind. And hey! That, gra uh, that paved road is that like the coolest road you've ever been on? I was like, what? What? I don't understand. Who put all that? Who put the millions of dollars in to put that single lane smooth? Yeah, wow. <laughs> Washington Chunk is back. The Chunkinator. Come on. Just like that, we're out of something pretty dry and new. The very lush forest. I like it here. Zui Mana, look at this view. Let's pull it to the edge and snap a picture, shall we? <laughs> it's so big. <sighs> dogs are barking so it's swim time well, that was super refreshing okay let's check all my error codes MTC failure in service so we're gonna clear one of those ABS failure clear that service clear that okay sorry scrappy we'll find out what's going on with you in a few more days a few more thousand kilometers too we briefly dipped into the town of Wenatchee and it looks like we're headed out again for the second half of this segment. Very nice, it's hot here. Whoa. -ho. My first dab of the trip, look at the dust around me. This is the deepest silt. Oh my goodness. Downright dodgy. I don't want to go down in it. <laughs> Everything will be covered in dust. That powder, you put your foot down, it's like stepping in deep snow. Hilarious. Humbling. <laughs> Wasn't that I've never weird? about it for that segment. Welcome to Kashmir. End of segment three. Cool man. We're halfway done. I think we're halfway done. We'll have to check them out. Well it's four in the afternoon. We just finished having some tacos in Kashmir. Now we're headed out starting section four. 
head into a little bit of a forest fire zone. I don't know if you can see it, but up there there's some uh, some smoke. It looks like our path will not interact with the fire activity, but you never know how much of the forest they have sectioned off. We'll find out. All right, we're in that crazy silt again. It's nowhere near as deep as before, at least not yet. So I'm looking ahead. machines to be working in the dust. I'll get a little bit behind so you can see the dust coming up. It's not that bad right now. Then he hits up deeper and it just explodes. We're up a little higher. You can see the accumulation of smoke now for that fire. Bummer. Single track, baby! There, you're at the top of a mountain. <laughs> and it's very smoky. We fueled up. We're gonna do the second half of this uh, segment. Probably gonna come in kind of late. Going a bit slow right now. Just waiting for Greg to catch up. And now here he is. I think hereby known as Taco Greg. He loves tacos. Where we stop. I'm like, you want to get tacos? He's like, yes. <laughs> Can you agree on that for sure. Shadows are getting long again, eh? Sun's going down. There's the lake. That's where we're headed. There's Taco Greg. Scott's starting in second gear again because he never seems to know what he's doing. around one month from now we're going to do our three-day event in uh, in Vernon, British Columbia, Canada. Everyone's welcome to come. It's not really an event actually, it's just a gathering. We're saying, hey, come to Vernon. There's going to be a bunch of people on adventure bikes there. We've got a bunch of routes figured out. There's a crap ton of trails throughout our region. And uh, you can uh, go on one of our routes or go explore, whatever. There's going to be a lot of people there. First year we had 30 people. Uh, now we're going to year five. There's probably going to be 150 people, but it's never crowded. Well, the occasional group gets a bit big, like 15 people, but uh, they've been getting better and better where lots of people are leading. It's like, hey, let's the four of us just go and go smash this cool route. There's half day routes, full day routes, and everything from, uh, oh geez, I wouldn't want to call anything beginner, but uh, earlier, sorry, easier intermediate all the way up to totally ridiculous, like, what do you think you're doing? <laughs> yeah, Google it, The Adventure Bike Gathering, or just go to theadventurebikegathering.com. It's uh, September, the 14, 15, 16 this year. It's right in that zone. It's a Thursday, Friday, Saturday. Come on down, hang out, have some good uh, bench racing with us too, and then uh, head home on Sunday, whatever that may be. All right, ooh, look at this view. Wow. You have a pet? I have a pet. <laughs> ah, it bit you? No, but it... A dragonfly. Oh, geez, that's a big one, too. Yeah, no, it, like, I, it smashed my, my collarbone. Yeah? And I was like, I gotta bounce off, and then I felt it, like, start crawling. I was like, <laughs> ay, 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 ay. <laughs> okay, so here's what's going on. We got a fork here. That way is called the jungle, and it's full of face slappers, we're told. So we're gonna go the other way because I don't I don't like face slappers. Yeah. 
we're doing a lot of zigging and zagging as we go down this hill. Pretty cool actually. But after 12 hours or so in the saddle, actually that's not true, after 12 hours or so standing on my pegs, my quads are pretty blasted. My feet are like a swamp. Time to settle down. All right, we found a cool place to stay. We're at end of stage four. Here's Greg right now. Our new friend Wyatt from Seattle, who let us stay in his campsite. And look at this cool bike. Sweet. Okay, we're gonna crush these last two sections and finish this puppy in three days. <laughs> so I was just checking out the steepness of this hill. See if it's steep enough because Scrappy doesn't want to start again. Wham! I don't know what the battery drain could be because it wasn't what I thought it was. It might just be a dead battery. This is my brand new lithium ion kick-ass battery. It's not allowed to be dead. What's the voltage? 13. But it could have something to do with the MTC and the ABS and all that stuff crapping its pants. Okay, wait a minute. Halt, halt, stop. I'm just gonna get on this puppy. Can I push on that solid everything? Yeah, everything back there is pretty good. We're gonna just get into a nice big gear now. Hang on. What's your problem? Three, four. All right, mush. Thank you. <laughs> Not working, Greg. <laughs> it needs more speed, yeah. or maybe I can throw a lower gear, like I can try a third. I know they bump inside. I'm gonna lie. One more section down here. You got a little jam in you still? Right. Here, let's just do it. We'll do one of these. No, it definitely doesn't like that. Are you doing the start as well? I did try it, it didn't it didn't do anything. Okay. Okay. Engage. Pedal, pedal, pedal. Come on, bikey. <laughs> oh, she sounds grumpy, eh? Hey? Look at all the lights blinking and Craig's gonna be tired after all that. <laughs> My champions! <laughs> well, you got one more day of hard use, Scrappy. And then... We're gonna go to the spa for a while. Wow, good morning, good morning, good morning, good morning. This is stunning. We're gonna try and do another unprecedented day of two BDR segments plus the last little bit of this one. And then also drive all the way home gonna be a big one we'll see what happens you never know with these things on previous pdr experiences we've had up to six flats that's zero on this one so far but these things take time you gotta have a flexible time schedule wow well that's the end of section four start of section five you can see the start point right there this might be the first stoplight that i've seen on this entire trip that's a plus Bunny! Bunny, 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 bunny. Don't worry. <laughs> I'm so excited about the bunny. I blew past this turn. I went to turn around and I flopped my bike over. Shema! <laughs> Greg's coming to help so I don't blow an O-ring. Let's see, what can I grab on to back here? All right, buddy, you ready? Let's bring her up. Yeah! Oh, scrappy! 
They're so thick. Jeez. I dumped it on that one. Got it? <laughs> yeah, I got it. Thanks. Just a little short. I put my foot down. Okay. Oh, my phone. Look at I took the G-forces. Okay, that's fine. We'll leave that in the video. Everybody needs to see the idiot spills. This morning we were talking riding technique with our, with our new friend Wyatt, and he was talking about how on the gravel it was so dicey, and he did this section yesterday going the other direction, and the sand, and he was actually under the impression that he should be de-weighting his front tire. And it's, and it's actually the opposite of that. So we had a good chat about that, different techniques for turning and things to remember. It's really cool because that sort of information needs to come to you at the right time. You can tell a person, like, drop your handlebars, point with your belly button or laser belly button, as Greg put it. Um, wagging your bum to the outside, weight the outside, put back, all that stuff. But if you're not at the point in your riding learning we are ready for that and ready to apply it and you know that something's wrong you got to change it it's just not going to work so it was really wonderful and, and greg was able to step forward as a guy who's recently become fast in gravel and uh, and talk about what he's learned and i think it even helped solidify for him what he's focusing on i think the more that we try to teach other people the better we become ourselves Today I'm actually focusing a little bit more on using my knees to add some weight to the front tire and reposition my knee pads a tiny bit so that it's more comfortable because I'm doing more squishing. There's a little bit of chunk. That's one of the great benefits of doing, in this case, three days of similar terrain, lots of fast, flowy gravel and dirt, is you can really just, if you're paying attention, you're actively trying to pay attention to what you're doing and what's working, I think you can really grow as a rider. Right now I'm squishing my knee into the top of my tank, right there. All right, you're not gonna be able to look. I gotta look at the road. Not on the trail, but we're gonna go up in there. Uh oh! <laughs> right on! I did not expect that big, huge pump! <laughs> I love single track. Be cool if there was a single track PDR. Yeah, baby. done this segment it's uh, 11 20. i think it's still going to be a pretty long day it's definitely going to be a really long day if we drive all the way home so we got a little bit of slab and then we're going to be heading back up over another couple of mountains that is a good looking river pretty sure we'll have a swim today but it's too early now we can't take too many breaks we just had some chimp chips aka dried bananas all charged up mid afternoon is time for swimming right more potholes and some frost heave and this road would be perfect. It's still paved. We've been on this for at least 10 minutes. We are covering some ground. Yes, and Greg's turn signal is still on. <laughs> okay, we're back in dirt. That was a really fun segment. I know I've said it already in this video series here, 
but I've never had so much fun on pavement than in Washington. Getting to the base of the BDR, there was a really cool segment, for like an hour, and then in the BDR there have been some really kooky pieces like that one. They make no sense, but they're there, so we're gonna ride them. Descended the mighty mountain and now we're headed into a tiny little town which marks the end of segment five Which was about hundred miles long and then we're into section six, which is a little tiny one Tiny don't I know not to judge Some of these shorter routes they can be spicy and take forever We'll see Well, I'm glad I always have my camping gear with me and I just have everything That thing. Pretty wild. <laughs> Stage five is done. Let's go smash this last one. Oh, yeah. It's hit it. Make it go. All my traction control is gone, so <laughs> finessing is a little tough. Hey, what's up? <sighs> Almost there. camera down. <sighs> Need to go back a bit. Get over that lip. Huh? <sighs> it's gonna get a little harder. Dusty. <laughs> if Greg comes up, we can finish it. <laughs> Woo. Oh, you didn't make it. <laughs> okay, Greg's going to give the hill another try. I want to hear that 690 bark. Oh jeez. Just don't hurt yourself, buddy. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Look ahead, look ahead. Look ahead, look ahead. Look ahead. <laughs> what are we doing? We're trying to make the border. We're doing shit like this. Yeah. Too much fucking around. Um, I'll give it one more try and then I'm gonna start turning around. I'm gonna give it one more try, yeah. and then I'm gonna turn it around. Do you want me to 
No, your bike's not in a very good spot there. Once you get down, maybe just go around. Yep. Beep yourself. It's super loose. <laughs> it's like my, even my foot's digging in. Look, there. That's loose. Oh, the last little bit, hey? It's doubtful. Ah! Scrappy, are you gaining weight? I'm gonna sit on the back. But I made it, basically, right? Backseat Betty. There. Good scrappy. Sorry about your clutch. <laughs> now sit right on the camera there. Whew. He made it. Well, thank you. <laughs> that was. A very dusty affair. Yeah, sorry. You make it a few feet. Yep. And then push down really hard on the bags. Give them a little more traction. Yeah, yeah. Nice. Thank you, Scott. <laughs> I had to get out of here. Yeah. Well, it would appear there's one more mountain in store for us. We just pulled off the pavement, did a really sharp turn, and boom, straight up again. All right, this is probably it. GPS says we're going to be done this in half an hour if we keep up our current speed. Check it! Check it! Check it! Ooh, I just saw a bear too. I couldn't turn on the camera in time. Small black bear. Fuzzy. Pretty. Pretty awesome. Pretty much done. Pretty tired. Scrappy. Scrappy's dashboard looks like a Christmas tree. Oh, the lights are on. Oh, Scrappy. Time to go to the spa. Rider's Edge suspension, here I come. They do everything for us, all of our bikes. Now they're a Gas Gas KTM and Husqvarna dealer. They got the full meal deal. Pretty exciting. We can get all our toys there now. This is it, the last turn on gravel, the last bit of dirt. I'm pretty sure for the Washington BDR. It was fantastic. Good looking at the view. It's so cool, it must be fake. Hey, we made it. This is the border crossing. It is 20 minutes to five. They close at 5 p.m. We did it. Well, I'm in. I'm not sure you're, you're fully in yet. How <laughs> they let you in. And the shots ring out. <laughs> we made it, we did it, we're going home, we're about to split up, so thanks for the good times, man. We did it. We did great. Thanks, Scott. I did okay, you did great. Thanks, everybody. You're a chimp now.